We may be a little bit biased, but we think that RVing is definitely better than cruising. Mm -hmm. And we're going to tell you why right now. When you're kind of setting your ways and you're used to your way of travel, for us it's RVing, it can be difficult to accommodate other means of travel. I think we're a little bit spoiled when it comes to RV life in general because we are so used to it and we love it so much we've been doing it for almost six years, right? Obviously RVing isn't for everybody. You have to kind of be able to RV and you know get in and out and tow or not tow or drive or whatever. It can be a lot of work. It can be a lot of work. It's not that we didn't enjoy our cruise to Alaska because we did and we're going to mm -hmm. get to that in a mm -hmm. moment but we just found ourselves comparing RV travel with cruising the whole time we were on it. So we're starting a list and this is reason number one RVing is better than cruising. So we thought it would be an interesting thing to talk about with you guys while we're showing you the remainder of our Alaskan cruise. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood a beautiful day for a neighbor oh slippery so, gorgeous, gorgeous day. Where are we, Sitka? Sitka. We're with these guys, in this case. But they're feeling it over there. Yeah. yeah. Welcome to sunny Sitka. <laughs> <laughs> Probably the biggest reason that RVing is better than cruising, at least for us, is your, your time restrictions on a cruise ship are obviously very rigid. It's a ship. It's got to leave on time. Yes. And you might have seen in our last video that we missed our biggest excursion because of weather. I don't think we're going to get to go on our helicopter tour. And if we were in an RV, we could have just extended or we would have probably been there longer. Yeah, for sure. And so you're stuck on the cruise ship's itinerary mm -hmm. and that's it. Yep. There's a mountain somewhere behind that stuff. Oh, there you can see the tops right over there. There it is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The bonus about that is that you don't have to plan your itinerary. That's <laughs> very true. So, you know, there is that aspect mm -hmm. of it as well. Another plus one for RV travel is you have your own transportation. Mm -hmm. That can be a big deal because transportation can sometimes be a hassle in these small Alaskan cities. Like when we got to Sitka and we had to sit in the very last row of the bus. Back at the bus. And it was packed. <laughs> there was not a single space left. This goes back to, I think, my own personal issues with just, I don't like being confined with a ton of people in a small space, but I'm also a little bit claustrophobic and being in the back of the bus, it was stuffy, people were coughing, and it just was very unpleasant because it wasn't a short trip either. And so having our own transportation would have been mm -hmm. awesome. We left off last time with, I think, day six of our 11-day Alaskan cruise. We didn't have any excursions planned for this particular port, so we just wanted to get out in town, look around, and see what's what, and see what we could get ourselves into. Yeah, and luckily our friends Phil and Stacy didn't have any plans either, so we just decided to hang out together that day and explore together. Mm -hmm. I will say that going on a cruise with friends is a huge benefit. That's A fun. huge plus. That was a lot it of fun. It really made the cruise so enjoyable having friends to hang out with. Absolutely. What do you say? You're like, sick of hanging out with me? <laughs> You're pretty cool. The first Orthodox church in North America, right there. From where I'm standing, I can't take my eyes off of this. Like the Grand Canyon or the peak of Everest. Volcanic heart, water falling apart. As you might imagine, there are a ton of shops and things to look at on there. Unfortunately, it's just a whole bunch of the same stuff in every it, store. It does all. seem like it, yeah. And none of it's like local, it's all made in China. It, well, I mean, I think there were some things that were made somewhat locally, but yeah, I was a little bit disappointed because I wanted to support local artists and stuff. Yeah. But the shops are still owned by local people, so, you know, if you buy stuff there, there's nothing wrong with that. I just wanted to get into the real stuff. I think that's also a benefit of RVing is that you can get away from just the touristy port towns, right? Mm -hmm. And you can you can spend more time getting into the local culture better than you can just a few hours off a ship. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem like fun at all. No. <laughs> Did you know that this is a whole rainforest area? This is? Yeah. Feels like it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> before you were in? Yeah, slightly. <laughs> I was on wooden ships. You're older than he is, buddy. 
The Fortress of the Bear used to be an old wastewater treatment facility that now houses a bear preserve. The organization provides protection and care to those orphaned bears, which is really cool. You're just chilling. <laughs> Look at him. He's all chill. He's just like blood. I love the one straddling it. The other one's like he's at, a, at the bar for a drink. Yes. He's had enough. Yeah, I think an important distinction to make with this place is these are all orphaned or rescue bears. Yeah. Not just like captured out of the wild for our amusement. Right. It's pretty cool. I always have mixed emotions when it comes to seeing wildlife in captivity. Although the reason that they do this is because they take right. wildlife that rescue. wouldn't survive on their own. Yeah, it's rescue based. Mm -hmm. We don't like the ones that, you know, they breed in captivity and stuff like those. And a real quick pro cruise tip that we learned from you guys in our last video is that when you take the cruises, buses, or whatever you're going to do on the cruises itinerary and you're late getting back, the ship will wait for you. Oh yeah, for sure. If you take your own, you're on your own. Yeah. As the Alaskan territory grew, the bear's territory diminished and more and more bear cubs have become orphaned and sick or injured. So this is where they're getting a lot of these bears from. There's no rehabilitation centers for bears in Alaska, so orphan cubs are often euthanized, which is really sad. So another good reason for the Fortress of the Bear. They also have quite a few eagles flying around there. We're definitely getting our fill of eagles on this trip. Yeah, it's really cool. <laughs> it's really cool to see them all. Yeah. Great. Chad, you said this is what? This was what? These were water clarification plants for the old pulp mill. Oh. I don't know what a pulp mill is, but this is where they clarified the water. Mm. <laughs> There's one female brown bear named Toby. Toby and her brothers were found when they were about one and a half years old after their mother died from ingesting plastic bags found in a garbage can. We're hearing that story a lot. You know, mm -hmm. the bears get in town, they get in trouble, they try to take them away, they come back, and they end up, you know, getting into trouble. But the humans invaded their original habitat. This is true. So, you know. But stay out of our trash cans. <laughs> Oh. He was running, chasing the other one. He chasing the bird? No, he was chasing each other. Look. Oh, they're playing. <laughs> He's like, I'm gonna get you. Toby rules. She's the smallest, but she's the boss. And the other two girls are bigger than her, but they keep their distance. Since there's no captive breeding allowed in Alaska. Toby has taken on the role of mother when it comes to her brothers, Baloo and Lucky. Look at those claws. That is just She's crazy. Look at the size difference between a black bear and a brown bear. A lot of other places that we've seen in our travels that have wildlife in containment breed as well. We don't like that. So it's, I guess it's kind of good that they're not allowed to breed in, in containment like yeah. this, you know? And plus they provide all of the bear necessities. <laughs> I have no words. Bear necessities, simple bear necessities. So since our taxi experience wasn't the greatest on the way here, we figured we would try this $5 shuttle thing out but we got to walk a little bit. So here we go. Getting around Sitka is not uh, the easiest thing to do. So it was, 45, it was 45 bucks to take us from downtown Sitka to this bear thing. Apparently it's not regulated so they could charge us whatever they want. It seems like a ripoff. Then we got scolded because we had called one cab company and they said it was gonna be an hour. So then we called another and she was on our way to pick us up. And the first guy called and said, where are you at? He didn't say, I have an opening. So Stacy thought it was the second lady. And the cabbie's guy got in a fight. It's a cutthroat. This is maybe not one of those stops ports of call that you want to wing it on your own. Yeah. Haynes, you could have done that, but because everything was like right there. But Sika might not have been the best port of call for us to just go explore on foot because everything's so spread out. 
So that is all for now. We were going to try to take that $5 shuttle, but we're outside in the rain and wet and cold. So we tried to call some cab companies and boy, we got one. It was kind of special. He, he was great though. <laughs> he, he was, was awesome. Great. But we're not sure how safe it was. <laughs> Again, there's no regulation. So this beat up old minivan, I got to say, he was great. But all the warning lights on this van were lit up, flashing. Yeah. He was very interesting and we're thankful for him. And we joke about it because it was, we did kind of feel a little unsafe. I tell you what, it was a, a darn sight better than our first cab ride. Yes, for sure. <laughs> Gonna go eat your friends. Oh, chair. <laughs> They're very tasty. <laughs> <laughs> So we got the mini suite, you know, as our viewers were used to small spaces, so it's fine. Um, this is bigger than our home. It is, well, yeah. <laughs> this is supposed to be a queen, but it's bigger than our king size RV bed. Yeah, it feels like a queen lengthwise. My feet, oh, my okay. feet come to the bottom. Oh, okay. The bed and the pillows have been very comfortable, I think. Mm -hmm. There's actually plenty of storage. So day one, we unpacked all of our stuff, mm -hmm. hung it up and put it in drawers. So I have these two, he has those in the closet. We'll show you in a minute. We've got a TV here. This is the desk, but it's also where you dry your hair. And Cause there's no option to do it anywhere else, but right here. Right, and this is also where you would use your curling irons and stuff, ladies. And this is the living area. I do think this pulls out into a bed. Yeah. It's kind of gross just kind of some stains on it <laughs> and stuff. Other TV, right next to the other TV. Mm -hmm. whoosh, whoosh. Yes. Lots of place for all of our junk, camera yes. gear and such. Candy and snack zone right there. <laughs> <laughs> and then this is the cool part. Okay. All of our doors are open so we can all just hang out and say hi to each other. This room is plenty big for us. I think it functions very well. It's oh, yeah. a little outdated, of course. It's a little old, but I think it functions really well mm -hmm. for our needs. Show them the, the lavatory. Let's go to the lavatory and the closet. As you can see, a lot of closet space and there's plenty of hangers. If you need more hangers, they will bring them to you. And then here is a wardrobe. The lavatory. That shower has amazing pressure and like unlimited hot water. It's amazing. Oh yeah, shower is really cool. Yeah. It's a bit complex. It's a bit complex. There's lots of dials. <laughs> Although it was very nice and spacious, it's mm. not our own home. Yeah. You know, and that's another reason why we like RVing better is because we have our own things, our own bed. Our dog gets to come with us <laughs> right there. We've got everything that we might need and want right there at our fingertips. Mm -hmm. You're obviously gonna have a lot longer in Alaska. You're probably gonna be there for two, maybe three months versus 11 days. Mm -hmm. So you can do a lot more. Now don't get us wrong. We know that there are a lot of cool things about cruising. We're not <laughs> trying to dog on the cruising thing here. And there are some benefits to cruising as well. I mean, they'll do your laundry for you. They will do the, yes. It's not cheap, but they will do it for you. We don't need dryer sheets to get that ocean scent. We just bring them out here by the ocean. There's also the room service factor that we talked about before. I think a huge thing about cruise ship travel is you don't have to do any maintenance. This is true. If anything breaks on the ship, you don't have to fix it. <laughs> there was that right. one really loud, weird noise they had for a little while. That's, tr yeah. that's true. Yeah. They had to come fix that. So we currently have this sound going on outside of our door. It sounds like a fire alarm. And of course, you don't have to drive the thousands of miles. I don't know how far it is. It's a long way. It's a long way to Alaska. Yes. Yeah. This is our view. It doesn't suck. It does not. It was time to meet up with all of our friends for a crab feast. Mmm, yes. Just get ready. I've used this more than I do. I do. <laughs> To be honest, the crab feast was just okay. It was fun getting to hang out with all of our friends, yeah. of course. And at least we had some crab crackers this time. <laughs> you gotta see part one of our Alaskan cruise to understand. Mm. 
the next day was an at sea day where Chad met up with everybody and sampled some of those delicious cocktails that they have on the menu. I stayed back in the room because I was tired and just wasn't feeling very good. And I ordered room service and I <laughs> got a delicious filet delivered right to my doorstep. So there is another pro right there of cruise ship versus RVing. Mm -hmm. And I just hung out in the bar and got hammered with everybody. <laughs> Oh, yeah. That's nice. Sure you gotta try that. There was one particular bar that made craft cocktails and actually put them up on the screen where you could watch them make them and they described it. And oh, those were good. And I think they tried them all. <laughs> That's nice. You got a kick? Yeah, it's got the burn kick. Our next stop was our last port in Alaska and it was Ketchikan. That's our boat. And you have these other ones here, smaller ones. Here's our last port of call in Alaska. Yep. Sometimes Ketchikan is the first port of call, depending on what cruise you take. But this is the last stop before we hit Vancouver Island, in British Columbia, tomorrow. No, not and tomorrow. Tomorrow is sea day. Sea day. Yeah. Oh, and then we get to go home. We're ready to go home. I'm ready. I yeah. think 11 days is a little much for me. We did not book an excursion through the cruise line. We just booked it last night at, Eagle One. at one of the tour companies here called Eagle One. And their track record looks pretty good. So we've got a couple hours until that tour starts. And so we're going to walk around Ketchikan. Ketchikan was founded as a salmon cannery site in 1885 and is known as the salmon capital of the world. But we weren't in salmon season yet, so, you know, we didn't really see any. This little park is pretty. I like the benches, aren't they cute? This town is the state's southernmost major settlement and the sixth most populous city in Alaska. Ketchikan is named after Ketchikan Creek, which Creek Street is named after, and that was something that was a must-see for us. Oh yeah, it was really neat. We found Creek Street. Creek Street is hard to say. Creek Street <laughs> is this neat little area, formerly the Red Light District, mm -hmm. that's filled with shops and um, little restaurants and galleries and things like that. And it's just a must-see because it's a really cute thing. I love the moss and the drops. Oh wow, that's like super bright. Isn't that gorgeous? It's like fluorescent. Water's so clear. Can't really tell with the camera. My polarized lenses are picking it up. Creek Street, which is formerly Ketchikan's red light district, like we mentioned, is a boardwalk on wooden pilings over the creek itself. Between 1903 and 1953, there were 30 brothels along Ketchikan's now colorful Creek Street. So you had some choices, variety. Well, that's like, you know, <laughs> 30 of them over the span of 50 years. So oh, okay. they no, weren't no. all there at the same time, babe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but the most well-known is Dolly's house, and that's at the end, and she was probably the most famous of the sporting women, as they called them. Mm -hmm. Sporting women. So you can pay to go and take a tour of Dolly's mm -hmm. house. We did not do that. But this thing is pretty cool. I think this is why they call it Creek Street. Oh my gosh and a whole boatload of kids just pulled in yeah they warned us yeah that's kind of cool they had the horn though mm -hmm. they announced their arrival with this special tune Ketchikan offered a lot of different excursions through the cruise line that we didn't choose, but like some of those excursions at this port were a walking tour, a duck boat tour, axe throwing, a rainforest sanctuary tour, fishing and UTV tours, and a lumberjack show. Let us know if you've been to Ketchikan, what were some of your favorite things to do there? It's a busy little spot here. together 
then we walked along the kind of the back side of Creek Street mm -hmm. that takes you up and through a little bit of woodsy area. Oh, oh wow. And you end up at the Married Man Trail sign, which That's is right. funny because <laughs> it's actually, I think the back way was the Married Man's way of getting through town instead of having to go through the horrible red light district because they were <laughs> yeah. married. This is true. So we met up with the folks at Eagle One. It's a smaller boat. It was a smaller group of people, which mm -hmm. was really That's nice. Awesome, I yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. And right away, we got a good vibe because the captain was saying, what time do you have to be back on the ship? Because if it's okay with you, we might extend this tour for another hour, an extra hour and a half or so, because some orcas were spotted over a, diff a different direction than they normally take. Yeah. yeah. And everybody was like, that sounds great. Awesome. I mean, how cool is that? He wants yeah. to spend extra time and take us so we can see these whales. Mm -hmm. Feel free to walk around the boat. There's a few spots on each side of the uh, awesome. bow you can sit down. More eyeballs, the better. Okay. We're going to run down south and hopefully catch up this pot orchid's been around there this morning. They did offer some complimentary non-alcoholic beverages and pre-packaged snacks, complimentary use of binoculars, and some blankets. Yep, they had hot beverages too, so coffee and hot chocolate, because it does get cold. I mean, yes, it's the summer months, but it's Alaska, and it's, it's cold and windy, and you need to bundle up. Like Chad mentioned, they'd been having a lot of luck seeing seeing whales on every tour. And, if, and I was looking at their social media pages and it was like day, whatever, 38 in a row of seeing whales and humpbacks and orcas and we're, we've been so successful. And so we're like- But then we show up. Yay. Blow their trend. Blow, like blowhole. <laughs> But it was really, really cool. Even though we didn't get to see any whales, uh, seeing the area from the water, we still got to see lots of other wildlife. Yes, sea we lions. got to see some more eagles, which of course is always awesome to see. Mm -hmm. And they spent time there throwing fish out for the eagles to dive and, and to catch and all mm -hmm. of that, which was really cool. Yeah, he's in there, or she. You can see that one adult sitting there looking at him. Another fledgling coming in here. There's another young one. Another one. Do you think that the fledglings are? How old would they be? They're one to three years. Oh, okay. Another fledgling coming in here. There's another young one. Yep. We're just kids staying young until we die. Pay the trust and you still dance. 
the sea lions mm -hmm. were really neat to see. We saw a deer on the... Yeah, one random deer on shore. Yeah, and it was, you know, with, without binoculars, I was like, ooh, something's moving over there. Maybe it's a... Maybe it's a bear. Maybe it's a bear, or maybe it's a fox. Maybe it's something different, but it was a deer. But it was a cute little black-tailed deer. Land shark. I love seeing a new place from the water's perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just a different way to see where you are. And I know that we came in on the ship, but you get to go in different coves and different waterways on a smaller boat. After a while, your eyes play tricks on you too, oh, right? Oh yeah, you see whales everywhere. You think that like, oh, is that, is that, is that fin? Oh, is that, is that tail? And it starts to make you a little bit crazy or it made me crazy. I don't know. We didn't see any whales. It was sad. We felt bad because we jinxed Phil and Stacy. Well, there was that one. Oh, we did see that one. <laughs> I forgot. How could I forget about that one? And even though we didn't get to see any whales, we were really super appreciative of Eagle One and their attempts to, they, they really put their oh, yeah. best effort in. And they were super nice. They were really cool. It's just, that's just how we roll. It's just our luck. You know, I think that they, you could tell they felt really bad too. Like they tried so hard to give us some whale sightings. So it's not the tour company's fault, it's nature and it's our fault. So don't go on wildlife tours with us. <laughs> Just don't do it. Don't do it. However, on our last port, as we were pulling into Victoria, there were whales all over the place. Yeah, we got to see them from our room too, which was super convenient. Mm -hmm. And luckily I had the, the zoom lens so we could kind of get in there. Uh, we saw some blowholes. Right, we did see a couple of, you could see the black and whites of the orcas coming out of the water and stuff. See them? There's two of them. Yeah. Got them, the yeah, orcas. You get them? Yep. And they are. And I could see them without the zoom lens, but it was a little harder to see but there were there were blowholes all over the place our whole group was out there watching and people are yelling over there over there two o'clock we got everybody whale watching kind of a sporting event kind of thing <laughs> but we did get to see quite a few and it was beautiful to be cruising along vancouver island mm -hmm. which is where victoria is Made it to, where are we? Victoria? Victoria! Getting off the boat, it's nice and sunny. It's our first real sunny, warmish day. That's true. It's like 60 something. Picking a van or something down by the river. Picking a van or something. <laughs> Our friend Christina, who helped us book this cruise, she has her own travel agency. We'll link that information down below. She helped us book this whole cruise. She helped us book everything, so it was awesome. She helped everybody in the group, which was mm -hmm. great. Victoria is the capital of British Columbia and sits on the southeastern end of Vancouver Island. The city has a population of over 91,000 and the greater Victoria area has a population of almost 400,000. Named for Queen Victoria, the city is one of the oldest in the Pacific Northwest with the British settlement beginning in 1843. Our main stop for the day was Bouchard Gardens. I think I'm saying that right. I'm not quite sure if I'm saying that right. Bouchard. Which was just beautiful. We weren't really sure what to expect. Yeah, it was awesome. But it was great. And it was a beautiful day. Oh my gosh, we got sunshine and warmth. We were actually sweating. Bouchard Gardens is a 119-year-old, 55-acre display garden located in the Brentwood Bay area of British Columbia. These gardens were created by Jenny Bouchard, who had a limestone quarry for her backyard. She envisioned landscaping a sunken garden in the place of the quarry, transforming the property for her family and friends for years to come. Talk about a gardening project, holy I mean, cow. Man, I know. <laughs> The garden is still privately owned and operated by the Bouchart family. Between 1906 and 1929, the Boucharts expanded the gardens, designing the Japanese garden on the seaside, the Italian garden on their former tennis court, and the fragrant overflowing rose garden. The dining room restaurant is open daily for traditional tea service. Admission to the Bouchart gardens is required in order to access the dining room. 
quite a change from the weather on our cruises. Just At the, all the other ports we went to was cold and rainy, but today in Victoria, it's hot and beautiful. Look at these. Was like a rolling sea, so we washed from the tallest peak, and we were singing, Ooh, if you'll be mine. Oh, these are neat. Look at these. Ooh, we will climb. I don't have the zoom lens this time. <laughs> The next morning we were sadly saying goodbye to all of our friends, old and new, and disembarking in the ship and going our separate ways. We had a great time on the cruise. It just makes us want to go back to Alaska and explore it the right way. Yeah, we are going to do that. We want to explore it our way. We want to get into more of the culture of, of each community that we're in, and we want to spend time there. So And get to see it, some of the more inland places. Yes, and let close. us know your Alaska RV travel tips mm -hmm. so that when we are ready to go, we are well prepared and we have it all planned out. Yeah, definitely. Let us know the RV parks, places you stayed. We'd love to hear all that. We'll pin it on our map so we have all that info. Yes. And we have more RV adventures coming up, so don't worry. There's no more cruising. There's no more cruising <laughs> videos coming up or anything like that for a while. So stay tuned because we have more RVing fun coming up.